Good morning, class. We are looking at College Algebra Chapter 3 Functions, Section 3.2, Domain and Range. Domain and Range. Chapter 3 covers Section 3.1, Functions and Function Notation, Domain and Range. Rates of change and behavior of graphs, composition of functions, transformation of functions, absolute value functions, inverse functions. Section 3.2 objectives. Find the domain of a function defined by an equation graph piecewise defined function. Reminding you of the following functions and function notation, dependent and independent variables. For an equation in variable x and y, if the value of y depends on the value of x, then y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. Relation, a set of ordered pairs. Domain, the set of all input values. X values, also known as independent variable for a relation. Range, the set of all output values. Y values, also known as dependent variable for a relation. So as we look at this graph, along the X axis, it covers from here to here, it's known as the domain. Along the Y axis, it covers from here to here. So the bottom of the graph of the function, the top of the graph of the function, and this would be the range. Function. A function is a relation in which each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. We can check it out. <clears throat> and the difference quotient should DQ which is really rise over run, f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h, uh, and h can't be zero. As always, when you're looking at a fraction, the denominator can't be zero. To recognize a function, a graph, we use what's called a VLT, vertical line test. If a vertical line can be drawn so that it intersects a graph at most at more than one point, then the graph does not represent a function. If a vertical line cannot be drawn so that it intersects a graph at more than one point, then the graph represents a function. In short, what is a function? The first variable, the x value, the independent variable cannot repeat. And one way to check it is through vertical line test. A function is one to one if each element in the range corresponds to exactly one element in the domain. Horizontal line test. If a horizontal line can be drawn so that it intersects the graph of a function at more than one point, the graph is not a one to one function. So in the case of a function, the x coordinates cannot repeat. In the case of a one-to-one -one function, now the y coordinates cannot repeat either. So we use VLT or vertical line test to check a function. We use HLT or horizontal line test to check to make sure it's a one-to-one -one function. Here's the library of functions. The summary. The constant function f of x or y equals b, b is a real number. Looks like this. So y or f of x equals b, it has a y-intercept at 0, b. There is no x-intercept. The domain is all real numbers from negative to positive infinity. Okay, This covers the x-axis. But it covers only one point along the y-axis. Therefore, the point B, and we use braces to represent one point. 
y or f of x equals x is a line that goes through the origin. Domain and range are both all real numbers from negative to positive infinity. So it covers the entire x-axis. If you were to lay it down on the x-axis, if you were to lay it down along the y-axis, it covers the entire uh, y-axis. Square function or f of x equals x squared, a parabola looks like that with the cube function looking like this. And the domain is all real numbers here. This side covers the right side and this side covers the left side of the x-axis. And the range from here up, zero to infinity. In this case, for a cube function, domain and range are all real numbers from negative to positive infinity in both cases. Square root function, y or f of x equals square root of x looks like this, whereas y or f of x equals cube root of x looks like this. By picking up a bunch of pairs, we can see that, and then they become library of functions, elementary functions, essential functions that we are supposed to know the graph for the sake of transformation. So as you can see here, the domain and range, domain goes from zero to infinity, so does the range. So the domain zero to infinity, range is zero to infinity, and zero is included. Uh, cube root of x, just like y equals x cubed, uh, the domain and range are all real numbers. The reciprocal function, f of x equals one over x, looking like that, it covers everything along the x-axis except the zero because we have a vertical uh, asymptote as well as a horizontal asymptote. We discuss it further later on. And it doesn't cover zero, the same thing for the y. So in both cases, all real numbers except zero. So how do we write that in an interval notation format, domain? D stands for domain, from negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. R stands for the range, from negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. So it's pretty straightforward, everybody. Domain and range. Domain, the set of all input values, x values, independent variable for a relation. Range, the set of all output values, y values, dependent variable for a relation. So if this is the case, we have a solid point here, solid point, the endpoints are included. So imagine if you were to put this along the x-axis, what portion of the x-axis will it cover from here to here? That's the domain. Imagine if you could put it along the y-axis, what portion of the y-axis will it cover from here to here? That's the range. So uh, as far as understanding the concept of the uh, functional value, so if this is one, and this is the y coordinate for that. This distance is f of one. So this point has coordinates one, f of one. This one, this coordinate would have a coordinate two, f of two. As you can see, in general, if you have x, this distance is f of x, so y corresponding to this x. So x comma f of x. So here's the first example. The graph of a function f is shown. Find the value of f of one and f of five. So that means locate the one along the x-axis and find the point on the graph. And that point has coordinates one, three. Therefore, the answer is for f of one, three. We are reading the graph, so we want f of five, locate five, 
one, two, three, four, five on the x-axis representing this point. And this point has a y-coordinate, which is roughly negative 0.7, negative 0.7, whatever that you read here. So So negative 0.7. What about the domain and range? Well, this graph covers anywhere from here to here along the x-axis. So if you were to lay it down along the x-axis, it can cover from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, five, six, seven. So the domain is zero to seven. If you were to lay it down along the Y axis, as you can see, the bottom is here, the top is here. So it will cover somewhere from here, negative two to here, positive four. So we say the range is Y such that Y is between negative two to four, or just the interval notation from negative two to four. Uh, how you represent that, it's up to you, everybody. Okay, but uh, if they ask for the interval notation, that would be the answer, okay? Again, pretty straightforward. Interval notation makes it, I think, pretty easy to uh, understand. Example two for the function f represented below, determine each of the following part A, what member of the range is paired with negative two. So you look at negative two, you look at the point, and this point, as you can see, has coordinates negative two, three. So it's negative two, three. This is the pair. So you could answer it in this format. If you just said three, it's just correct. They may just want you the wall coordinate to write the wall coordinate. I wanted to emphasize the location. Domain, what is the domain? So if you were to lay this down, along the x-axis, the left side will cover this point about negative five and the right side will cover this point three. So you can write it in this format. X such that X is between negative five and three. So minus five less than or equal to X less than or equal to three. Or you can go with the interval notation. Either way is fine, everybody. What member of the domain is paired with the six? So that means along the y-axis, you have to locate number six. Along the y-axis, we locate number six. And we find the point. And this point seems to correspond to roughly 2.5. So again, it may not be exact. So it corresponds to 2.5. So it gives us the pair 2.5 comma 6. And y equals 6 corresponds to x equals 2.5. So we can write it in this fashion that x equals 2.5. So in fact, let's just get rid of that.
What about the range of f? If we lay this down along the y-axis, the bottom seem to be covering negative one, the top seem to be covering seven. So we can write from negative one to seven. So y such that negative one is less than or equal to y less than or equal to seven. If I were to write a, an interval notation, I could write it as negative one comma seven, both of them in a bracket because the endpoints are included. Now, the reason sometimes they like this method better because if you just write the interval notation, one may not know which one is the domain, which one is the range. Clearly this X represents the domain, this Y represents the range, that's why. But you need to understand in what format they're asking you to write it and you do so accordingly. Finding the domain of a function defined by an equation. How do we do that? Number one, start with the domain as the set of real numbers. In other words, consider all real numbers to be the domain and then start excluding if need be how. Number two, if the equation has a denominator, exclude any number that give a zero denominator. So any numbers that result in zero as far as the denominator is concerned. If the equation has a radical of even index, exclude any number that cause any numbers that cause the expression inside the radical to be negative. Notice two things that you want to exclude. If you have a fractional format, you set the denominator equal to zero and exclude it. That's the second part. If you have a radical format, if the index is odd, you have nothing to worry about. If it's even, has to be non-negative, what's inside the radical side. So here's a warm-up example. If you look at the first one, g of x equals x squared minus nine. If you look at the second one, cube root of x minus, nine, minus one. What is the domain? It's all real numbers. Why is that? This is considered, as you recall, a polynomial. Polynomial of degree two. Any polynomial has a domain that is all real numbers. So what is a polynomial in general? Let me write it here. A polynomial P of X is A sub N, X to the power of N plus A sub N minus one, X to the power of N minus one, all the way to A sub zero, where A sub zero all the way to A sub N they all are integers. And as you recall, integers means one, two, three to infinity, negative one. I mean the exponents are, are, are real numbers. My apologies class here, these are real numbers. Real numbers, okay. real numbers and the exponents all exponents that means n 
n minus 1 all the way, of course, to a 0, because this one, this last one, has x to the power of 0. They are all whole numbers. That's why, for example, x to the power of one half or two thirds, or if you have a fractional format, it's not a polynomial. So um, this is a polynomial of degree two. And all polynomials have a domain, which is all real numbers. What about this one? If you go back here, a radical of even index, the index is odd. It's an odd number, everybody. Okay. So pretty straightforward. You want to find the domain of each function. The first function, f of x, equals x plus 4 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. It's a fractional format. More uh, precisely, it's a rational function. A rational function is a function where the top and the bottom are both polynomials. As you recall, the process is very simple. Set the denominator equal to 0 and exclude that. To do so, we are going to factor this into x minus 3, x plus 1, because when two numbers, the product is negative 3, and the sum is negative 2. So set this equal to 0 by factoring x is either 3 or negative 1. So this says x is 3. This one, x, let me just write, equals 1. So when you set the denominator equal to zero, this is what you get. What is the domain? X can't be three. This was negative one. I mentioned it on that. This is negative. So all real numbers except three are negative one. So you can write it in this format, X such that X is not equal to three x is not equal to negative one. But the interval notation is written in the following manner. Minus infinity comma negative one, union negative one to three, union three to infinity. Notice for negative one and three, we all use parentheses, which means we are excluding the endpoints negative one and three. So that's one format. The restriction is, again, set the denominator equal to zero, exclude that. This one, notice when we don't write the index, the index is two, the index is even, therefore three minus two x, where the denominator equal to zero. So we move the three, we make a negative three on the right side, divide both sides by negative two, so we get x. And the sign will flip over greater than or equal, changes to less than or equal. Negative three over negative two is positive three halves. So x is less than or equal to three halves. So this is the inequality format and this is the interval format from negative infinity to three halves what about three halves because we have the equality it takes a bracket f of x equals square root of x plus three over x minus four
Well, the top part, x plus 3, must be larger than equal to 0 because the index is missing means the index is 2. And the bottom one says x cannot be 4, right? x minus 4 equal to 0, x cannot be 4. So let's write them together. On the one hand, x plus 3 must be larger than or equal to 0. On the other hand, x can't be 4. So if you stick with that only, it means x is larger than or equal to minus 3. And it means from minus 3 to infinity. So here's what you do. And this is not, of course, finished. You look at this one. If it's in this interval, you're going to exclude that. If it's not, just ignore it. Let's say instead of x is not equal to 4, let's say it was negative 4. If it were negative 4, we would have nothing to worry about. But it's not. 4 is in between. So we get rid of it. How? This way. We say from negative three to four, union four to infinity. Negative three endpoint is included, but four is not included, we use parentheses. So this becomes the answer. Again, I believe it's pretty straightforward, everybody. Given the function f of x equals x over x plus 1, is the point 1 comma 1 half, the pair of 1 comma 1 half, on the graph of this function f of x? You just plug in. Meaning what? Just plug in 1. If the result is 1 half, the answer is yes. If it's anything else, the answer is no. So let's evaluate f of 1. When we do that, it's 1 over 2. That's correct. The answer is yes. When x equals 2, what is f of x? And then write it as a point, as a pair. So basically, class, plug in 2. Plug in 2. So we get 2 over 2 plus 1. We get 2 thirds. What does it mean? The pair with coordinates 2 comma 2 thirds is on the graph of the function f of x equals x over x plus 1. f of x equals 2. That means the y coordinate in essence is 2. What is x and what is the point? Well, set f of x, x over x plus 1 equals 2 and solve for x. And to do so, we do the cross product. 2 times x plus 1 equals 1 times x. When we distribute, you get 2x plus 2 on the left side. We move things around. And we get x equals minus 2. So the pair x comma y, x comma y, so has the coordinates negative 2, y or f of x is 2. So that's the pair. Pretty straightforward, everybody. Graph P 
piecewise defined functions, sketch the graph of the function f of x equals 2x minus 3 times the absolute value of x. First, I want to remind you about the absolute value of x. You remember it's distance from 0, therefore. Absolute value of x is x if x is greater than or equal to 0. Absolute value of x is minus x if x is less than 0. To make some sense out of this. So see how that works because sometimes students get confused. If I give you 5, abs so we it puts us here, everybody. It says drop the absolute value. But if I ask you to come up with absolute value of negative five, it puts us here. It, it says drop the absolute value and put a negative in front of it. Remember, x is minus five here. So, and what minus x means is the opposite of this number. So this means if x is negative, right, it's opposite. So minus x doesn't mean a negative value. Minus x means the opposite of whatever x is. In fact, because x is negative, its opposite is positive. So write the opposite of minus 5, minus, minus 5, and that is equal to positive 5. That's the meaning of absolute value. I wanted to mention it here because absent students sometimes make a mistake. With that being the case, Let's look at this one. If x is positive, just drop the absolute value, make it 2x minus 3x. If x is greater than or equal to 0, 2x minus 3x or minus x. However, if x is negative, then 2x minus 3 times, remember, you're going to replace this with minus x, which makes it plus, so 2x plus 3x makes it 5x. So I hope this concept and this will help you see what's going on here. Okay, let me erase actually this so it becomes clear. This absolute value of x, you drop the absolute value sign if x is greater than or equal to 0. This absolute value of x is replaced by a negative if x is less than 0. In essence, you just change the x. So negative 3 remains actually um, outside. So it may be better that you leave it in this manner. You put, you keep the negative three outside and you just change this to minus x. That's the concept. Not that it changes anything. What is 2x minus 3x? Minus x. What is 2x minus 3 times minus x? That means plus 3x. That means 5x. So now these are the two pieces of the puzzle. f of x on the one hand is minus x. On the other hand is 5x. So how do I graph piecewise defined function? First, I'm going to graph each piece separately without paying any attention to the restriction. So I'm going to graph f of x or y equals minus x. As you know, looks like that. It goes through the origin. You can put 0, 0, and then um, 1, negative 1. Graph that. I'm going to graph this piece again, never mind what it says here. f of x or y equals 5x. It's a graph that goes through the origin this way. It goes through 0, 0. And if x is 1, y is 5. So you graph those. First, we want to look at it that way. Okay. Now, we are going to put them together. Now, we're going to pay attention to what's given. 
It says f of x equals minus x if x is less than or equal to zero. With the equality, that means this portion is okay, this portion is not. In other words, here's this portion is out, everybody. So the answer is this part, including this. So you keep this part. For this part, f of x or y equals 5x, this is when x is less than zero. That means this part is out. The other part is the solution. This is the solution. And there is a hole here. So again, this means this portion and zero, zero is included. This means this portion and zero, zero is not included because we don't have the equality. When we put these two together, Minus x uh, uh, over here is the other way around. My apologies for this one, everybody. So let me. Uh, this portion is out. This portion is the graph with this being a solid point because of the equality. So let me go over that one more time. So f of x of y equals minus x if x is larger than or equal to zero. So larger than or equal to zero is acceptable. This portion is not, my apologies. So pay attention to this one more time. y equals minus x is this one. This portion is not acceptable because x must be larger than or equal to zero, this portion is, and the end point zero is also acceptable. When we look at this one, this is when x is less than zero, this side. So this is acceptable, this is not. Because it doesn't have the equality, this takes a hold. However, when we put these two together, this covers this one, it's important. It's part of the upper piece, not the bottom, the uh, bottom piece but they come together and they look like this. This one and this one will give us this graph. Graph piecewise defined function, sketch the graph <clears throat> of the function f of x. Evaluate a few points and determine the domain and the range. As far as evaluating a few points, let's first do that. Then I want to show you again how we graph them piece by piece and then put them together. So, uh, for example, if we pick those points, let's see how we do the evaluation. Minus one. Pay, pay attention to the fact that f of x or y equals minus x plus one. When x is between these two numbers, between negative one and one, negative one is included, one is not. At precisely x equals one, we have the we have the y coordinate two. So right away, this means everybody. This means two here. Look at this one. This means one is two. So uh, the pair is one comma two. And this says f of x takes the uh, function x squared when x is larger than one. So. Let's start with negative one. Negative one is included here. So if I put a negative one here, I get minus negative one, which makes it positive one and one is two. If I want to put zero, uh, it's between negative one and one. So I'm going to put it here again. And zero gives me zero plus one, one. One 
it's not here. I mentioned that one is two. Okay, one is here. Okay, two. Uh, two, x larger than one goes here. Two squared is four. Three squared is nine. And we get those. Just in case if we were to evaluate a few points. And honestly, if you put a few more points, you can graph it. Just for the sake of argument, less than negative one, if you pick a number less than negative one, let's say negative two, it's not defined there. So what is the value for negative two? It's not given because this goes from negative one to one and beyond negative one on the left, we don't have any piece. So we have three pieces and we don't have anything that defines. But in any event, uh, let's see how we graph. We are going to graph y equals minus x plus one without paying any attention to the pieces. Then we put them together. So uh, y equals minus x plus one. I hope you see that you can put, obviously zero one is the y-intercept. And if you choose x to be one, you get zero. So you have those two pairs, zero, one, this is two, so one is in between. This is two, so one is in between. And that's the graph, okay? So this is the first one. Again, we are going to pay attention to the limitation later on to the restrictions. Then we have the pair one comma two, this one. The pair or the point one comma two. Then y or f of x equals x squared is a parabola. You know that, right? Now, so we have one, two, three pieces. Of course, the second piece is just a point. Which portion of each graph is acceptable? Let's look at the restriction that they give us. Starting with this one, this line, which portion can we use? It says you can use it from negative one to one. So negative one is here. I'm looking at the graph. Negative one is here and the point is here. So over here we have a point which is included because of the equality. So that one is good. All the way to one, you locate the one, the one is here, right? One zero, and that takes a hole. So this portion, this is a solid point, this is a hole. This is a solid point because of the equality, this is a hole because we don't have the equality. Uh, this one is very straightforward, there's only one point there. The point with coordinates one, two. Now let's look at the parabola, which see, which will see which part will work and which part will not. It says we can use the parabola as long as x is larger than one. So this parabola, when x is one, we are here. And it says it's good when x is larger than one. So from here on, what about this point? We don't have the equality. So at x equals one, which is one, so that means one, one, there is a hole here, everybody. There is a hole here because we don't have equality and it goes up. So to put them together, it looks like this. This portion, there is a hole. This portion, there is a hole. And this point is here. Now let's look at the domain and range. It, Actually, right here, it tells you the domain is from negative one, negative one is included, all the way to infinity. What about the range? Notice the range is from the bottom here all the way to infinity, but is zero included? We have a hole here, so zero is not included. So which portion of the Y axis is covered? the positive side and zero is not included. So the range goes from zero to infinity and zero takes a parenthesis because it's not included.
find h of minus 5 when h of x is defined as x plus 4 is if x is larger than or equal to minus 4 and h of x equals minus x plus 4 if x is less than minus 4 and we claim h of minus 5 is 1 we want to see why is that it says when x is less than negative 4 clearly minus 5 is less than negative 4 use this one so we're going to plug it into this one minus minus 5 plus 4 equals minus negative 1 equals 1. Okay. We continue with piece piecewise defined functions. We want to graph f of x and find its domain and range where f of x is defined as an absolute value of x when x is between negative 3 and 1 and then cube root of x if x is larger than or equal to 1. So we want to do the same thing. That means we are going to graph each piece and then put them together. So first, absolute value of x. So y equals absolute value of x. It's a v-shape. And it looks like that. Cube root of x, y equals cube root of x, looks like this. Okay, now we're going to go and pay attention to this restriction. This says it's good from negative 3 to positive 1. So negative 3 is here. And 1 is here. Now, is negative 3 included? Yes, so you get a solid point here. Is positive 1 included? No, you get a hole here. Okay. So if we put them together, it looks like that. We are going to see which portion. So we need a solid point here. We have a hole here. So this portion. So from here to here to here. And there is a hole here. What about this one? When x is greater than or equal to 1. First of all, if you put 1, you get 1. By the way, it's important to know the coordinates of these points. So let me write that this one has coordinates negative 3, positive 3. This hole, and this is a hole, has coordinates 1 and 1. And now what happens is from 1, including 1, to infinity, we use this function. So we look at 1 and we locate 1, 1, and everything to the right of it. So this has coordinates 1, 1, 1, 1. So I want to make sure we understand what's happening. So we have this portion from the absolute value function, this portion from the absolute value function, from the cube root function, there is a hole here at 1, 1. There is a solid point at 1, 1. So this will cover this one, but it comes from the second piece. So what we have is, in essence, let me show you on this one, and then I'll separate that. Let me see what color I want to use. Uh, let's use this color. So we locate negative 3, 3 here. And by the way, this one becomes a solid. So this portion is covered. 
okay? This portion is covered. Both of these pieces are from the absolute value. This point, this point is a hole from the absolute value point of view and it's solid from the point of view of a cube root, so they come together. So this is covered. And this portion is covered and looks like this. So therefore, what is the domain? Well, the domain is all real numbers, stop, except it stops at here or at here. So from negative three to infinity. So because to the left of negative three, uh, nothing is defined. So the domain starts from negative three, including negative three and goes to infinity. But uh, what about the range? As you look at this result or this result, everything that is on the positive side of Y, how about zero? Zero is also included. So the range is from zero to infinity. So this the means this class bracket. So there's a bracket here, everybody. If it's hard to see bracket zero to infinity. So again, sometimes they use the inequality because they want to make sure that everybody understands in the first case, it means X is larger than or equal to negative three. That's for the domain. Uh, for the range, Y is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, that's why sometimes they use the inequality so the reader can see which one is X, which one is Y. We're going to continue with the piecewise defined function. Graph the following piecewise defined function. F of X is three. If X is less than or equal to zero and it's minus X, if X is between zero and one, zero is not included, one is included. So in short, we graph the first one, Y equals three, which is a horizontal line. And y equals minus x, which is a line that goes through the origin. So this is y equals three. This is y equals minus x. Now we're gonna put them together by looking at the restriction. Let's see how this thing is going to work. It says f of x is three as long as x is less than or equal to zero. So it's this line, as long as it's less than or equal to zero to the left of uh, zero. So there is a solid point here and everything on this side. So that's what it means. What about y equals minus x? Well, when it's between zero and one, so zero is not included because we don't have equality, one is included. 1, 1, this point has coordinates 1, 1. Uh, I mean 1, negative 1. So this one has coordinates 1, negative 1. This one has coordinates 0, 3. And to separate that to be clear, there is a solid point goes to negative infinity. There is a hole and goes this way all the way to one comma negative one, and that's the graph. Example 10, obtain information about the graph of a function. Here's the graph that is given. The very first question is, what is f of zero? When x is zero, 
what is the y coordinate and i hope you see we are referring to this point right to this point which has a coordinate which has coordinate 0 4 so the answer is 4 domain and range domain if you lay this along the x axis this covers this one this covers this one and so it goes anywhere from zero to this point, the y coordinate for this point, four pi, okay. What about the range? The bottom is here, the top is here, the range is this much from negative four to positive four. So again, I'm showing both ways. Again, I want to emphasize, sometimes they put it in this format so the reader can see when we say zero to four pi, one may be uh, confused as to whether we are referring to X or Y. So sometimes they write it in this format, X such that X is between zero and four pi, both of them, the endpoints are included or bracket zero bracket four pi, four pi close bracket. Uh, for the y, y is between negative 4 and 4 uh, and endpoints included, bracket minus 4, comma 4, close bracket. Intercepts. Well, the y-intercept is at 0, 4. And then the x-intercepts are, are these 4. Let's just plug in those 4. So the intercepts. First, the y is 0, 4. Now the x intercepts power to zero, three power to zero, five power to zero, seven power to zero. This is in trigonometry. Okay, this is a cosine function, by the way. Graph of cosine function from zero to four pi. How often the graph intersects the line y equals two? Y equals two is a horizontal line. You graph it. Here's number two. Here's the Y equals two. As you can see, it crosses it at one, two, three, four. Maybe I what color do I want to use? So there is one place here, one place here, one place here, one place here. Total of four. So four times. F of X equals negative four. So the Y coordinate is negative four, everybody. This point has coordinates pi comma negative four. This point has coordinates three pi negative four. So there are two places. X is either pi, or three pi. This point, this point, pi, as well as three pi. F of x is larger than zero. What is the x value? Where is the function above the x-axis? That's the meaning of f of x larger than zero. So notice, see if I can use some colors here that will help. Um, let's go with green. This portion is above the x-axis. So from zero to pi over two, but pi over two is not included. This portion of the graph, maybe if I make it red, it's easier to really see. Let me just actually clean it up and go with the red. So this portion of the graph is above the x-axis. This portion of the graph is above the x-axis. This portion of the graph is above the x-axis. So please understand, for example, here, you say from zero to here, pi over two, okay? Zero is included, yes. 
clearly is above. Pi over two, no, because we want it to be greater than zero. Then from here to here is from three pi over two to five pi over two and three pi over two and pi pi over two, they take parentheses, they are not included. From seven pi over two to here, four pi. Is four pi included? Yes, it's above. But is seven pi over two included? No. So we write zero to pi over two. Zero is included, pi over two is not. Union, three pi over two to five pi over two, none of them is included. Seven pi over two is not included. Four pi is included. Union seven pi over two uh, to four pi. 